Here's a gusset I'm going to be putting in. I'm putting a 90 degree bend on it right there and it's going to wrap the tube. Really box that in. I'm going to be dimple dyeing here. Getting smaller. Tie that into the B pillar. It's going to be super burly. With this welded on and then that welded door bar. It's going to be very strong. Stout cage. Get a view from further back of the car, kind of. This thing's gonna be a beast. All right, after tracing it out, I just grabbed my good old cutoff wheel. This started out as like six inch. This isn't for newbies, rookies, anyone that is not skilled with a cutoff wheel because this thing can grab, explode, blow up in your face, it'll, you know, tear off your knuckles. Because when it's new, it's really close to your knuckles right here. So yeah, I just did all this with the cutoff wheel. I cut in on an angle like that, and then turned like that, and then just did a little more angle there, and then just just slowly going around. I just love thin, big cutoff wheels like this. They just rip through sheet metal. I have a plasma cutter, but I like this better sometimes. And I'll finish it off real quick just to show you how fast it goes. That was a little slower than normal because I was holding the camera, but there you go. Okay, here's our piece after cleaning it up. Kind of explain what I did real quick. I cleaned up the edges, test fit, it fit quite well. So after doing this one and liking how that all worked out, this number is three quarter away from the edge and three quarter away from this bend because that's where it folds at 90 so then I marked out the first dimple die will be a two and a half inch so I marked you know center came up center did a little starter hole for a visual for you guys but you know I'm gonna bring it over here to the super sophisticated setup see I've been drilling some more holes those are the dimple dies you always want to drill into a piece of wood, you know. You don't want to drill into the floor. And then this is what I use right here. This is Swag Off Roads Super Shaft. It's really slick. It's actually for the tube notcher. Same little shaft to notch tube. Put the tube in there and notch it. Anyways, I got a couple of them, so I use this one for doing dimple die holes. It has this nice flat spot right here for a three quarter inch wrench to go on for when the hole saw gets stuck. You just grab like these babies and twist her off or whatever, you know, like. I don't like to use this little set that goes into the holes because then the it's not tight like all the way down. Like it, here I'll show you like, it'll actually uh, wobble. Okay, see, that's the next hole right there. So then, it actually has some play. It's kind of hard to see, but I don't like play. So I go down tight. That's why that flat spot's nice, to get it off when it gets too tight. So yeah, we'll just drill out this hole, and then slowly go up, get all your spacing correct, and have fun. Alright, now that you're done drilling that, I don't like to push too hard when I'm using the hole saw. Just kind of let the weight of your hand and arm slowly go through. It takes less than a minute. Having a little patience sometimes is a good thing because you don't want to be pushing hard and have it catch. That's never fun on your wrist. So then you want to clean up the hole so it's not all sharp because people will be fingering your dimple dies on your nice cage gussets. 
because you know they just look cool and they want to touch them and you don't want to have a sharp edge and cut someone because that's pretty shitty and they'll wonder who built this cage there's some sharp edge up in here so I just hit the edge just go over this kind of surface with a DA grinder dual action sander like kind of clean that up it's just 180 grit and then I bring it over I put this little grinding bit in my drill press and I kind of just go around the edges and angle it obviously as the drill press is turned on but yeah just kind of clean it up make it all nice and then you want to bring it over to the press with the dimple die of the right size which is the biggest one and then show you how these work real quick make sure you know which way the dimple die is going to be going so you know it's correct so slide that in put your try to get this camera dialed put this one over the top and then see since there's nothing there I just want to put a piece of metal in there so it's pushes nice and even and then just crank it down just keep cranking on the handle until it gets nice and flat in there it's kinda hard to see but you just want it nice and tight There you go. That's a two and a half inch dimple. And then you'll do your next one and the one after that. So it turns out like that one. People are probably going to wonder how I got this nice bend so tight to the dimple. I was a little concerned myself at how I was going to get that so tight because I have a little press break, but it would have smashed that dimple because I put the dimple in before you bend it 90. So this is how. This is the driver's side. I put it in my vise here, and I put two plates of metal in between the jaws that are raised above this deck because otherwise the dimple angle right here would hit and get all deformed and messed up so that's how I did the other one I just took like dead blow hammer and pounded it on flat so once you get it bent down a good ways with the dead blow just smashing on it kinda just giving it some light thumps back and forth and slowly putting pressure with the other hand on it just letting it go once it gets pretty far about three quarters of the way down I took just a flat bar quarter inch and put it in right here tight to get that 90 like and then the, you just hit that with a a good hammer and just I mean beat it like you can hit that really hard in order to get a nice tight clean 90 degree bend all right I slid it up into place you can see that my little notch for my tube needs a little more taken off just so this lays all the way down flat it needs about an eighth inch or more three sixteenths or something but yeah the fits pretty nice so far it's gonna need a little bit taken off on the back side right along in here but I mean it's pretty decent I just rounded that corner from the get-go because I knew it was going to need some clearance, but it doesn't have to fit super tight, like, it's just going to be welded, so the weld will fill that. So yeah, just kind of dial it in.